Your pre-workout is some bullshit. Instead, take these science-based supplements. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today, the last person in the fitness industry to still not have their own pre-workout to sell you. Here's the deal, most pre-workout supplements have a laundry list of ingredients, most of which don't have enough evidence behind them to support their efficacy, and when they do have studies behind them, the results of these studies usually don't support their inclusion before a workout. That said, there is evidence specifically on the BANG pre-workout master blaster, specifically a study by Schwartz and colleagues that suggests that having pre-workout can actually boost your size and strength gains. That said, with a pre-workout drink that has as many ingredients as this one does, the question has to be asked, which of these ingredients actually help you gain muscle and strength? Well, I'm here to answer that. Let's look at what supplements actually have merit for boosting your size and strength gains. Which of these supplements actually have evidence behind them? In any discussion of efficacious supplements for size and strength, creatine has to be first. By far, it has the most evidence behind it. Creatine is considered to be one of the few efficacious ergogenic dietary supplements for augmenting resistance training adaptations. Mechanistically, creatine increases the skeletal muscle's total creatine, free creatine, and phosphocreatine, allowing for a greater capacity to rapidly resynthesize adenosine triphosphate, and consequently, enhance high-intensity exercise. For anyone who's not really a nerd, here's what that means. Creatine helps your muscles produce more energy in the form of ATP. Additionally, because creatine binds to water within a muscle, it also pretty quickly makes you look a little bit more jacked. When 10 studies looking at the effectiveness of adding creatine to a lifting program were analyzed in a recent meta-analysis, they found a trivial but significant benefit to using creatine as a supplement in terms of boosting your upper body and lower body size gains. Importantly, these gains appeared more meaningful in younger people than older people. We also have evidence suggesting that creatine supplementation is likely more important and more beneficial for people who don't have much creatine in their diet, namely people who typically abstain from eating animal products. So vegans, for example. Here is the disappointing bit. Having your creatine before a workout as part of your pre-workout doesn't actually benefit you. And in some ways, it might actually hinder you. Indeed, the deal with creatine is that you simply want to build up the creatine levels within your muscles. It doesn't matter whether you take it before a session or at any point throughout the day. But if it doesn't matter when you get it in, couldn't a pre-workout just be a convenient way to get it in? Unfortunately, probably not. There's a line of research suggesting that when you co-consume caffeine, which is almost always present in pre-workouts, with creatine, the benefit of creatine for size and strength actually seems to disappear. Why is this? Well, while there's a variety of mechanisms that could be at play, for example, caffeine and creatine both impact muscle relaxation time, the most likely explanation is that both caffeine and creatine can actually cause some gastrointestinal distress, aka when you consume them, your tummy gets a little bit upset. And so, if within your pre-workout you have both creatine and caffeine, both of which can cause your tummy to be upset, and you go into a session after having had this god-awful concoction, yeah, you might not perform your best, simply because your tummy is upset. Importantly, the dose here is the poison. Higher doses of caffeine and of creatine probably enhance this effect. Additionally, if you have enough caffeine across the whole day, the benefit of creatine may still be hindered, even if you don't co-consume them. So the big takeaway there is, try not to have your creatine through your pre-workout if it has caffeine, and try and separate when you take your creatine and when you take your caffeine throughout the day. As far as dosage goes, at least three grams a day for creatine is a good idea, up to five. And a more recent call to action has been to take 0.1 grams of creatine per kilogram of body weight per day, as recommended by Darren Kanda. So creatine in your pre-workout is a bust. What should we actually take in a pre-workout? Well, the main supplement you want to be taking in a pre-workout is caffeine, by a long shot. Caffeine is a drug that stimulates and increases the activity of your brain and nervous system. It has a variety of physiological effects. It makes you feel a little bit less tired, which is good for performance, and it also interacts with some of your muscle physiology, potentially leading to better performance. Likewise, a study by Giralis Costas and colleagues actually found greater bench press gains when taking caffeine habitually over four weeks as opposed to not taking anything. And in this study, they were taking three milligrams 
caffeine per kilogram of body weight. So there is evidence of both caffeine increasing performance in the gym acutely. When you take it, it increases performance, happy days, but also of that then leading to greater strength gains when repeated over weeks and weeks. So with a million dollar question, how much should you take and when should you take it? Well, to see a benefit in performance and long-term adaptations, you probably want to take two to three milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight at least before session. Although you can see further benefits going all the way up to six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. However, as you go from say two to three to six, there is going to be an increase in side effects. For example, if you're training later in the day and you're taking six milligrams, that may actually be reducing your gains by impairing your sleep later down the line. So just consider how close to sleep you're taking it. Indeed, there's some evidence that caffeine can interfere with sleep even as long as 12 hours later, depending on the dose. When should you take caffeine? Well, in all likelihood, 30 to 60 minutes before training. Importantly, most of the effect of caffeine on training performance and gains appears to be physiological. It has a physiological effect, but there is a small component of placebo effect where just because you're taking caffeine and you know you've taken caffeine, you will see a slight improvement in your performance. Going back to the study by Schwartz and colleagues where they saw that the Bang pre-workout master blaster drink increased your gains, it is likely that creatine and caffeine largely accounted for the additional gains that they saw in the study. So caffeine seems to be the main thing when it comes to a pre-workout supplement. Is there anything else? It turns out there might be, and that is citrulline malate. Citrulline malate is the combination of citrulline and another compound called malate, both of which are important for energy production and metabolism. Now, does citrulline actually offer further benefits than just taking caffeine? That question is exactly what a study by Hogan and colleagues set out to investigate. They compared four groups. One group, the placebo group, just got a sham treatment that didn't have caffeine or citrulline. The second group consumed six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight, a pretty high dose of caffeine. The third group consumed 12 grams of citrulline malate which is also on the upper end of what you would recommend. The final group took both 12 grams of citrulline malate and six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight. And here are the results on performance. Generally, caffeine alone resulted in similar improvements in performance as caffeine and citrulline. However, in some measurements, there was a slight marginal benefit to be seen potentially by adding citrulline to caffeine. If you look at the data on citrulline malate overall for improving resistance training performance, there is evidence of a small effect being there as well. So when combining citrulline malate and caffeine, you may get diminishing returns, but you may still gain a little bit something extra. Importantly, in this study I just mentioned, when participants were taking six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight, alongside 12 grams of citrulline malate, side effects were pretty pronounced. Indeed, around 20% of participants in that group experienced significant side effects. So if you're taking so much citrulline malate and caffeine and creatine at once, that you start shitting yourself during a session, consider the ergogenic performance enhancing benefit gone. Since both creatine, caffeine, and citrulline malate all have a potential benefit, but can also all cause significant gastrointestinal, aka tummy distress, you may want to be cautious with how you combine them and just monitor how you feel. Indeed, this might be a good place to take a minimalist approach to your supplementation. So while keeping the gastrointestinal distress component in mind, you may want to take six to 12 grams of citrulline malate 40 to 60 minutes before a session as well. Perhaps you could even take it alongside your caffeine if you choose to use it. Now, going down the list of supplements that may or may not be beneficial in your pre-workout, there are a couple more. Neither of them have as much support as say, caffeine or even citrulline malate, but there is some support for these. So I'd be remiss not to mention them. The first one is beta alanine. I'll be drawing heavily from Eric Trexler's information online, specifically the mass research review in this one, because it's not an area of research I was particularly familiar with until I read up on it recently. To make a long story short, the evidence on beta alanine is quite mixed when it comes to lifting. On the one hand, there is quite a significant field of research showing a benefit to beta alanine supplementation when it comes to things like sprinting or other endurance-based exercise modes. However, when it comes to bodybuilding or powerlifting or even strongman, there just isn't the same data and that data isn't nearly as convincing when it comes to these sports. So while there is currently a mechanistic rationale for potentially using beta alanine, for example, when you're about to do a strongman medley in the months leading up to it, or when you're gonna compete in CrossFit, because these are quite glycolytic forms of exercise, 
there's currently insufficient evidence to really recommend beta alanine as a supplement if you're just lifting for overall hypertrophy and or strength. For example, a recent meta-analysis on the effects of beta alanine supplementation on fat-free mass that included 10 studies was very far from finding any significant meaningful findings of beta alanine supplementation when it came to fat-free mass. With that being said, when they specifically looked at higher dosages of beta alanine and over longer timeframes, this is where effects at least seem to become more consistently positive if there was an effect in the first place. The issue with that is that a lot of the benefit of beta alanine comes with higher doses and longer timeframes. However, you have to weigh out the cost benefit here. With beta alanine specifically, there is a relatively substantial side effect profile. Specifically, when you take over a certain dose of beta alanine at once, you will get something called paresthesia which essentially feels like having needles poked into your skin. If you've ever taken pre-workout with beta alanine or taken beta alanine on its own, you'll have felt this and you'll know what this feels like. For most people, that side effect is enough to justify not taking beta alanine considering how mixed the evidence is. So for most people just interested in building muscle and gaining strength, I wouldn't really recommend beta alanine at this juncture. Perhaps if more evidence comes out that is more convincing, I'll change my stance. The final supplement that I would consider in your pre-workout that isn't actually really a pre-workout is dietary nitrate. Dietary nitrate, which can be found in a variety of vegetables, for example, is a nitric oxide precursor. Because it is a nitric oxide precursor, it has the potential to increase blood flow and act through different physiological mechanisms to increase your performance when you're lifting weights. But don't just rely on the mechanisms. For example, a study by Williams and colleagues from 2020 found that consuming dietary nitrate before a session increased how many reps participants could perform with 70% of their one rep max on the bench, it increased velocity on the bench, and it increased power output. Once again though, just like with creatine, chronic consumption of dietary nitrate seems to be the main thing. It doesn't really have to do with having it before a session, it just has to do with having enough of it in your diet on a consistent basis. Importantly, while it has a good track record in terms of studies when it comes to increasing performance, it isn't actually all that clear yet. The evidence when it comes to lifting isn't super substantial just yet. In fact, let me give you a few quotes from a recent systematic review on this topic. Nitrate supplementation may have an ergogenic benefit on muscle strength given the appropriate dosage, format, timing, and type of exercise assessment. Muscle hypertrophy was not as widely assessed in the studies included, and therefore, these data are inconclusive. Of the 12 studies reviewed here, the results of six studies indicated that when subjects were given nitrate or increased their total dietary intake of nitrate, muscle strength and muscular performance were improved. An ergogenic effect of nitrate was produced in response to an acute dose of 400 milligrams of nitrate in the form of beetroot juice slash shot administered two to two and a half hours before exercise. When the resistance training test involved compound movements conducted at 60 to 70% of Warner max, muscle efficiency and time to exhaustion were improved. Notwithstanding, the remaining six supplementation interventions resulted in no differences in muscle hypertrophy or strength in the tested subjects. So most of the current studies on nitrate supplementation just haven't actually looked at hypertrophy or strength gains, just at how it increases performance acutely. Importantly, the timing doesn't seem to matter too much. As long as you have some nitrate in your diet, you're probably good. Interestingly, one review paper has suggested that females may be less responsive and less likely to benefit from dietary nitrates compared to males. If you wanted to go the supplementation route, you would want to take 400 to 800 milligrams of dietary nitrate per day. The timing isn't hugely influential. You could also get it through certain vegetables, such as the following. Specifically, green leafy vegetables such as spinach, rocket, fennel, Chinese cabbage, radishes, and parsley all have a decent amount of dietary nitrate. So to conclude on nitrate, it is a good bet, but there is more research needed before we can widely recommend it as a pretty evidence-based strategy to increase hypertrophy and strength. I would classify it as a bit more convincing than beta alanine, but not as convincing as caffeine, creatine, or citrulline malate. So now that I've broken down the five most important supplements that potentially have a role when it comes to a pre-workout supplement for their gym, Here's my recommendations for a minimalist formulation, aka a sort of bare bone approach, and a maximalist formulation, aka something you want to take if you really want to optimize everything just in case there is a benefit to be had. If you're going to be a minimalist about it, you can honestly get away with no pre-workout at all. Depending on your circumstances, for example, if you're training close to bedtime or what have you, this may actually be the right call. However, if you do want to take something, consider caffeine and potentially citrulline malate. As far as caffeine goes, start with a dosage of two to three milligrams per kilogram of body weight. 
For citrulline night, try 6 to 10 grams. Take both your caffeine and your citrulline night at the same time about 40 to 60 minutes before session. You may want to add your citrulline to a sweetened beverage like a Diet Pepsi or a Diet Coke or what have you, as this can actually fit together well. Finally, for the maximalist formulation, here's what I would do. I would take the aforementioned citrulline night and caffeine, potentially going a little bit higher than what I recommended. So maybe closer to four to six milligrams of caffeine per kilogram of body weight and closer to eight to 12 grams of citrulline malate, but add into the mix both some dietary nitrate, around 400 to 800 milligrams per day, either as a supplement or through your diet, and potentially some beta alanine. Anyways, guys, that's the video. A lot of research went into this one. So if you liked it, please like, comment, subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. I appreciate it. And I'll see you guys, my subscribers, in that next one. Peace.